Thank you so much for coming out tonight and being here for this class for emergency preparedness for pet owners. How many of us are pet owners? Raise of a hand. Literally everyone here. Same. <laughs> So this, I hope this gives you guys some good information. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. And it is going to be a little interactive, so I will call on the crowd uh, to answer some of my questions. So let's get started. My name is Jennifer Madison. I am the Kirkland Police Department Animal Control Officer. Let me see if I can work this. Ha! There I am. Um, there's me out in action. This is one of the cute friends that I ran into uh, down at the Juanita Bay Park. Uh, very sweet. But a little bit about me. I was hired by the police department back in September of 2017. I have my bachelor's degree in science, in forensic, uh, in forensic science, but criminal justice. Uh, I also worked as a surgical assistant as a, in an emergency medicine uh, clinic for veterinary medicine. I'm a little nervous, so just bear with me. And then I also have prior law, uh, law enforcement experience. I worked in a corrections facility uh, for a few months back in when we lived in Colorado Springs. I'm also a multiple pet owner. So as of right now, I just have one pet not multiple, but I grew up with pets throughout my whole life. Uh, some other interesting facts about me is I am a mother of three. I have three daughters, and they are very much into pets, so we take all of this information being prepared and taking care of pets home. So I literally live my job, which is great. Uh, also with us, I want to introduce. Hi. Yes. So, uh, sorry I'm in the back behind everybody. My name is Carissa Smith. I am the emergency preparedness coordinator for the city of Kirkland. Um, so, yep, thank you guys for coming out. I've been with the city for just over a year now doing kind of the preparedness classes, sometimes teaching, sometimes just hosting and letting other experts come in and talk. So Jennifer has a lot of really good information for pet preparedness today, but I just want to remind you that, you know, your community and your animals are going to rely on you in an emergency. So as you think about pet preparedness, please don't skimp on the human preparedness. It's really important that you guys have supplies, you guys have a plan so that you can be there for the other people and animals who need you too. Awesome. So I am actually going to do that really fun thing where we go around and we introduce ourselves. And I would like to hear the name of maybe some of your pets. Uh, so I'll have you start. I'm Cynthia, and I've got a house full of four parakeets, uh, boxer dozen mix, a pond of goldfish, <laughs> an inside aquarium of goldfish, and another tank of uh, tropical fish. Awesome. And a small dwarf hamster that my son takes care of. So cute. <laughs> awesome. My name is Nicole, and I have a golden doodle that looks very, very much like that one. Oh. <laughs> Named Chewy. Chewy, very cute. How old is Chewy? He's three. Three, okay. Awesome. Oh, I'm Pamela, my husband Larry, and we have um, three Chihuahua uh, Mindy Pin mix, mixes and uh, they're a family, a dad, daughter, and a mom. So, anyway. And they're very cute. I saw a Christmas photo of them, and they're darling. <laughs> yes. Um, go ahead. Yes. My name's Jason. Um, I'd like to get a husky. I don't have a dog right now. I had a black lab coming up, and uh, I have a cat in the Awesome. My name is Kelly. Um, both, of our, both our cat and dog died last year. So um, it's been a year and we're finally ready. Our new dog arrives on Tuesday. Oh, how exciting. What type of dog? Uh, her name is Tilly and she's a rescue coming from Texas because they seem to have a lot. They do. They they do. do. There. Yeah, I kept going to the Humane Society here, but all they had were four male pit bulls. Mm. I mean, that was it. It's all they had. I yes. have coworkers that spend a dog coming from Texas. Yeah, week they too, have. So. All, apparently, they don't spay due to their animals down there, so there's lots of them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she is a uh, lab, uh, either a fox terrier or a rat terrier mix. Oh. So she's about 40 pounds, but tall. 
Very cute. Will you have to send me a picture? I want to see what she looks like. Awesome. My name's Nanda, and growing up, we've had cats and dogs and the gold, wonderful goldfish, um, but also my grandparents had horses and cows and pigs and oh. chickens, and my aunt has actual wolves as dogs. Yes, Here, she's had she in Kirkland? Them from puppies. Wow. So, That's um, very cool. So grew up or have grown up around wolves as well, which is, I don't recommend it, sorry. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's just not. Yeah. Just yeah, not. But uh, currently my dog is a pit terrier mix. She's a rescue. Um, about 50 pounds of, yeah, she's three, will be four at the end of February. So, um, and she's born deaf, and that's why she's a whole lot of, just demanding. Yes. <laughs> She's very cute, though. Yes, that picture is darling. Yes. I'm Sonia, and I have a cat named Callie. She's a calico. Aww. And I rescued her, uh, or I got her from Rebecca's Rainbow, Rainbow Re Rescue. Nice. A little over five years ago. Great organization. Oh, she's polydactyl, so she's got cute little. Oh, she's got the cute paws. Oh. And then our two newcomers. Um, we are rescue people so we've got two dogs i have radigan who is a chihuahua mix he is now king of the mountain we <laughs> had to rescue another dog because he needed a he dog he needed a dog oh so i've got yzma who is a little under one and a half we rescued her from the yakima indian reservation and okay. she had been loose on the streets and already had a litter of puppies before she was one. Oh wow. So she's here and fixed and they are bestest buds ever and she's kind of a chihuahua beagle mix <laughs> and a whole bunch of other stuff. It sounds very interesting. <laughs> Kenna and Stacy were Kirkland CERT members. Oh awesome. Well Juanita. For Juanita. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for coming out and sharing about your pets. Um Something that I think we can all agree on is that our pets are family. Mm -hmm. We view them as family, so we need to make sure that they are prepared for anything that occurs. Um, so we're gonna get started on this. Okay, so some of the threats and hazards that we could come into. Um, so earthquakes, we have tsunamis, uh, landslides. Back in 2014, we had the mudslide. Um, it did take, or it killed 44 people, but which is extremely sad. Um, but it also displaced a lot of pets and animals. Um, that included a, I th they said a herd of 37 horses. So those animals needed to be rehomed. Um, to a, a proper place and a lot of the families uh, around the area they weren't able to, to take their pets with them you know um, so it's just being prepared and making sure that we have packs ready to go and we'll go through the kits of what you should what I would recommend that you have ready just in you can have it in your car you could have it in your house right by the front door but they're just easy packs that you take with you and you Take them on the go. Okay. How do I make the little links work? Okay. okay this is a is this a video and um, it's pretty short, but I wanted you guys to see it. Oh. Oh, do we have sound? Full screens get bad. Doesn't them in. Okay. Oh wait, how do I get out of the full screen? There we go. Okay. So are your pets prepared? Who at a raise of hands, who already has a kit for their pet? That's awesome. Okay, that's a good amount of hands. Do you guys have a plan 
So if something was to happen, say we get an earthquake, do you guys have a plan for just your family? For what, yes. what you guys might do, where to go, that type of thing? And have you guys thought about your pets yep. in that process? Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome, okay. So let's start with the very basics. If you guys open those folders that are in front of you, on one of the sides, there is a little sticker. It's gonna look like this one, it might be a little different, um, but this is a good one to have just in case uh, for any reason, any emergency reason, saying that yes, there are pets inside of my house, this is the number of pets that I have, um, please look for them in an emergency contact number, which could be, I mean, it could be yours, it could be to your, your veterinary clinic that you use, that you trust, or a family member. It's an emergency contact. Um, I have one of these for my house, just in case, just for my one dog, but it's good to have. So you guys should all have one. If you didn't get one, let me know, and then I can, I can hand out more after, okay? Put like the emergency contact number and phone number on it? Yep, so, so some of them might be different. So you can put a phone number on there um, of your number. You could put a friend's number. We're going to talk about a designated caregiver here in a little bit. Um, anybody that you want as your emergency contact for your pet. So if emergency responders are coming to your house, they know who to call. Okay. So where would you where would you put this? I would put it in my front window. Um, so I have a front door, and right next to my front door, I have a little front window. Um, you can. It's on the second floor. It's on the second floor. You can even put it to your door. I mean, this one you can get a different one that sticks directly to your door. Oh, okay. They have different styles, okay. but these stickers are nice to have. Okay. Thank you. So. If um, a disaster was to happen, we always recommend that you don't leave your pet behind. And here are some ways to ensure that they don't get left behind. Contact uh, your veterinarian for a list of preferred boarding kennels and facilities. Identify hotels or motels outside of the Kirkland area in case Kirkland gets hit hard, you have outside areas that where you can take your pets and they're accepted there um, if you're staying in a hotel or a motel. Um, ask your local animal shelter if they provide emergency shelter or fostering for pets. Um, if you are going to be staying with a family member who says, sorry, I, I can't have Fluffy in the house with me right now, um, but maybe some fostering options. Um, and then ask a friend or a relative who is living outside of that area to help care for your pet. Uh, for me, I have family, you know, far and wide in between. They're all animal lovers, so they would take in my dog if need be. Um, but I still went out and identified these as well because you want to have plan A, plan B, plan C, just in case. So designated care, um, caregivers, these are really helpful because not all of us are you know, at home when these disasters happen. So we want to make sure that we have maybe a neighbor go and check at our house for our pets, maybe a, a family member or a friend, somebody who knows, hey, this is my plan for my pet. Um, this is how many pets I do have please do X, Y, and Z with them. I have an extra kit available for my designated caregiver for my pet. Um, and it's right by the front door, right next to my girls' backpacks, and it says Lulu on it. So you can't miss it. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's nice to make sure that if somebody's gonna be taking care of your pet for an extended period of time, you give them a little setup kit, you know. Uh, let's see here. Something to also think about with your designated caregiver is on the microchip, on your pet licensing, with your veterinary clinic, make sure they're listed as your emergency contact. So if you're, you know, we scan them for a microchip and they get, say they get lost, and we scan them for a microchip, 
your numbers on there, but also your emergency caregiver. How many of your pets are microchipped? Just raise your hand. That's amazing, that's awesome. Um, I have two microchip breeders at the PD. Um, all of the vet clinics that I, I'm aware of sorry, all have uh, microchip breeders as well. So if an animal does get lost, taking them to the PD or taking them to the vet clinic shelter, we'll be able to scan for those. Let's talk about making our kits. Yes. Okay. So inside your folder as well, there's these little pamphlets. Uh, it has the exact same thing like this. So I would recommend that you keep these folders to go inside your kit when you have your checklist, but also these uh, folders would be nice for any veterinary documents that you have. You can put them all in there, any, any medical stuff, um, anything like that. So copy, we're gonna read through them, I'm sorry, but we're gonna go through we have our copies of our rabies and other vaccinations. With that, if your cat does not get a rabies vaccine due to allergies um, or your dog doesn't or any certain vaccination, I would make sure that's noted in that, in those medical records, just in case if your designated caregiver doesn't know. Um, a two week supply of pet food or, and water, an appropriate size crate or kennel, this is a good one to make sure that you identify on your crate and uh, kennel who that crate, crate, or crate and kennel belongs to. So your name, your phone number, your address, your emergency contact, and that animal. It's a lot, but it's, it's good to have. Um, these ones are fun, no spill food or water bowls. Does anybody have those collapsible ones, those collapsible food and water bowls? Have the no spill for water. Okay. Yeah. Where it's, does it suction down? Nope. Oh, tell it's me about actually, it. Actually, so it's a bowl that's kind of odd shape. It's bowl, higher at one end than the other end, so they can go in. But I can actually put it on the dock, on the back seat or in the front seat. She rides up front next to me, harnessed oh, nice. it and all that. So I'll just put the water on the in between the two seats. And okay. You can put it there, and it does not spill. Nice. I had it set up that way all the way over to Glacier and back. Wow. And no she spills. constantly had water, no spills. That's she awesome. She with her ears in it a lot of times when it got too hot. That's it cute. Cools, yes, it cools them down. See, so mine, mine has a baffle in it so that the water doesn't slop, and then there's a little, like a ridge over the top. Okay. It's got Velcro on the bottom, so you can put it on the floor of the car, and it just stays. And it just stays there. Wow. Nice. Get water when she and, yeah, I actually found, found mine at what's the, it used to be, no, you know, do, do these. I, whatever the new name, oh. I, can't, I can't think of the new name all of a sudden, but I, I found it over at that store on okay. the top of market, so. Nice, so it sounds yeah. like there's a few different options. Yeah. Um, that's really good. Medications, talk to your veterinarian about getting an extra supply, maybe a, maybe a week worth of extra medication if your pet is on that, uh, any type of medicine. Poo-poo bags, you guys all got a little poo-poo bag dispenser. Underneath your poo-poo bag dispenser is a flashlight just in case. Mm -hmm. Something I wanted to add, sorry to go back to the medications, oh, yep. is if you can't for some reason get a longer supply, also applicable for humans or mm -hmm. even if you can, uh, make sure that you have prescriptions written down and copied. So if you do run out, it's a lot easier to fill them than if you just go up you know, to a mobile prescription unit that comes in after a disaster and you say, well, you know, someone is taking this prescription for this. If you have the actual copy, it's a lot easier to get that going right away. Where you're going to have trouble getting extra is if it's a pain med or a control med, then mm -hmm. you have trouble getting extra. To yeah. Have but that's, that's a very good idea. Get a vacation bill. It'll still be a hassle, but they'll do it, and then you can have, then you've got a month's backup and you just stay a month ahead. Okay, nice. Uh, disinfectants is another one. Pets make messes when they're nervous, and this is going to be a stressful time uh, for everybody involved, and especially our furry friends or guild or scaly. Um, so having disinfectant wipes, paper towels. Uh, I have a little thing of like baby wipes, mm -hmm. um, and then I also have little, they're called paw wipes for her feet, just so my, she doesn't have dirt on her toes. Weird, um, but I have those. Toys and blankets and treats. 
they may not want to eat the food that you have right away, but having those savory treats available, at least they're getting something in their tummy. Um, and then they're having some comfort items as well. Uh, does anybody's pet in here have like a major comfort item that they have to have with them at all times? We've noticed that another good thing is if you sleep with the item, it's got your scent on it. Yes. And we vacation a lot, which we're very fortunate to do that. But, you know, you wash everything for the dog sitter, but it's like, you no, know, that one blankie. That is one blankie, it. yes. It's got to be with us. And, and that's what I was going to recommend is if you have clothing that you, you know, you no longer want or they're going to the Goodwill, maybe wear it one more time and then stuff it into that kit so it smells like, it smells like you. Um, this is a really good one and this will pop back up later, but as a recent photo of your pet that identifies the type of dog that you have or animal that you have, the sex of your animal, if it's altered, unaltered, uh, the age, um, and then color. So it's a good little ID for your pet to, for you to have on you and to carry. Um, microchip information, which we talked about, and then make sure you go on and you register. Sometimes the microchip company won't alert you to actually follow up the registration after it's been implanted in by the veterinarian or the shelter. So just follow up with that. Mm -hmm. When I took the um, Humane Society of America sheltering course, they suggested you have a picture of your pet with you. We were going to go over that, yes. That, okay, sorry. No, 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 that's great. But Absolutely. That proves that it's yours. Because apparently they've had trouble at emergency shelter yeah. with people trying to steal dogs. Yes. Which is about the crappiest thing ever. It's a great idea. And it's just identifying that, that proof of ownership. Especially if you have a purebred. Yes. It's hard to tell them apart. Like mm -hmm. my dogs, there's no doubt. Yes. Uh, some calming medicine or what they call a, a thunder shirt. It's like a, it's like a hugging shirt. It calms them down. I don't have anything like that for Miss Lulu and her kit um, because I know that these things, these familiar items, will work really well for her. Uh, she has a particular shirt of mine that was my favorite that is now hers. We don't talk about it. Um, <laughs> some grooming supplies that also goes with those paw wipes, but maybe having some, you know, a small little travel size bottle of doggy shampoo or anything that your animal needs for grooming. Uh, nail clippers are a good one to have just in case. Um, manual can opener, just in, we won't, maybe won't have electricity, so that electric one does us no good. So make sure we have a manual one. Flea, tick, and heartworm prevention products. Uh, even if, say, if you just put it on your pet, we don't know how long you, it is before a veterinarian is going to be able to supply you with um, more. So just having an extra little dose of that to, to hold you guys over. And then we're going to go over some first aid stuff, but having a first aid book and kit is also nice to have in there for minor injuries that you could easily, you know, treat until you can get to a veterinarian. Um, and then leashes, harnesses, and collar ID. You guys all got slip leads. Uh, they're super easy. They're multi-use. You can use them as a leash. You can use them as a, a muzzle, which I, after class I can definitely show you how to do. They, they're very nice to, to have. And they also have our number on them, just in case. Any questions about this or any additions that you would add to your kit? Can you explain the, pet, the first aid book for pets? So the first aid book for pets, which is our next slide, um, the first, the one that I use, I got off of Amazon for, I think it was like $14. Let me see here. It's the Pet Emergency Pocket Guide. It's uh, the, it's waterproof, so it, it does. It's so nice, and it's got pictures. It's got diagrams. It's very user friendly, and you can get it Amazon Prime now, I think, too. And I use it a lot in the field. So we talked about having your prepared kit of all the animals' goodies, but this is a first aid kit that you should also have, and it's nice just to have around the house as well. Um, for those little minor scrapes and stuff. I'm not gonna walk you through all of these. I mean, you can, you can read through them. They're basic, they're basic ones that we would have as humans. I mean, you can use similar, similar things. The only thing that I would recommend not using is adhesive band-aids, like our regular band-aids, and placing that on an animal skin. It can be very irritating. Um, so using a gauze and then that vet wrap instead is a, is a good option. 
Um, yeah. You were mentioning somewhere random things for our kids. Mm -hmm. So my old guy, well, he's not super old, but he's an older guy, sensitive tummy, so I know in a disaster is a huge issue. So um, we keep these oh, yeah. 12 Potty pads. of our tills for 100 of them every once in a while. Very good idea. But um, are they? the little potty oh, pads. Oh, pads. Yeah. And we actually had to use them last week when there was an incident in Helen Keller. The, the, the area, yeah. Mm -hmm. I wasn't letting my dogs out for anything. Um, Whole Foods, what is pet that? bone broth. Oh, OK. Oh, yeah, yeah. So nice. bone broth. It's not good for dogs, but pet No, bone this broth is. It is good for dogs. But um, we also keep those little silly microwavable cups of rice. So Radigan, the, the bone broth, the rice, and some organic pumpkin. I mean, the no pumpkin's pumpkin. amazing for ouchy tummies or bubbly tummies. <laughs> and and we're, we're just thinking of him. And baby food, my vet, baby, mm -hmm. baby meat. We call it lickable meat at our house. <laughs> And then I've got my stupid little spoon for scooping things. That's all great stuff to and have. And Mud Bay also has freeze-dried cups of food. Uh -huh. So you just throw some water in. You can make it warm. But in an emergency, if there's no heat, it, you, know, you throw some water in, they love it. That's it's, wonderful. That's a great idea. And then we'll get $1.99. Mud, so mud Bay, dog, you said? Get, yeah. Get four of them if you've got a huge dog. I, my dogs could eat off of one for two days. Wow, that's awesome. Very, very good idea. Any other suggestions that you'd want to put in your kit? Or any other? Yeah, we keep pumpkin. We used to keep pumpkin in our kit for our dog. She had a, after she had a bout of pancreatitis, we found mm. that that was the, the, um, the, pro, the, the fiber, and it was really good for her. Mm -hmm. And I yes. think better um, Honest Kitchen, which is the dehydrated food. It's, uh, human gray food that's just dehydrated, so it's really easy to go and you need water. Nice. Those are really good ideas. Pumpkin, I like the pumpkin idea, because bubbly tummies, that's a great, great thing for bubbly tummies. That's what we call it in it's my house. It's easy to find the food that's orange. <laughs> that too. Um, something to add to, we never expect our pets to be bitey or to harm us, but in a scary situation, stressful situation, or if they're in pain, having a soft muzzle is really nice. Um, if you don't have a soft muzzle, you, like I said, I can teach you guys how to do the muzzle with the slip lead. It's very easy, um, just requires a quicker hand. Uh, but having these muzzles is a nice thing as well. Let's see, is there anything on there? So. Yeah, just your, just your normal first aid kit. Just make sure you have just a tiny one in there for your pet, just to take along. So identification of your pet. We talked uh, about this with the uh, microchips. Looks like everybody has their pet microchipped here, which is amazing. Um, but. With the microchip, we talked about having that emergency contact, making sure we always check in with them and ensure that it is registered. Because I've run into a few strays where they didn't register, so I had to call the implant facility. They didn't find the, you know, the vet clinic who then tracked down the owner, which is great. We got the doggy home, but it, it takes a lot of steps. Um, so making sure that information is nice and current uh, is, is important. Another thing for here in Kirkland, the city of Bothell, I also believe uh, there's some other jurisdictions around us that also use pet data as their pet licensing service. Um, that database we all have access to. Um, and when I say all, like law enforcement, uh, we have access to that database. So if your pet does, is wearing their collar and does have that tag on, We'll be able to access that database and look up owner information uh, to include phone numbers, your emergency contact, email address, actual address. It will be able to hold your pet's veterinary records for vaccinations. 
So the, this is very nice to have for our Kirkland residents. Uh, if you don't currently have your pets licensed, I did bring a 30-day free pet license application. We can fill them out tonight and get them signed up. Um, but this is, this combined with our microchips is how I reunite most of the pets here, along with the help of Facebook. But <laughs> these are, I can't stress it enough how, how important these are. Um, do you guys have any questions on that? Yeah. Okay, so the stuff that we fill up for our Kirkland license mm -hmm. is fed into pet data, which other people have access to? No, 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 sorry, I, I, I apologize for that miscommunication. It's for law enforcement. Yeah, but other law enforcement have access to that? No, just the ACOs, the animal control officers. Okay. So like the city of Bothell animal control. Okay, so like, you know, we used to have King County, so that was with all of King County. Mm -hmm. So does King County have access to pet data? Not that I'm aware of, okay. um, but that's an, that's an easy fix of, hey, we want to look at this person because we have this ID tag. Can you help us out? And that's a yes, we will, because we want to make sure that pet gets home. Is that system going to get any easier or better? My, my one dog has two dog licenses because just the processing. Records, then we don't have this. Then I sent it in. Then I got one through it, City it Hall. Was just and then they sent me one. It, it was kind of a huge nightmare and it, it mm. actually made me super cranky I've got to give it to the front desk girl for dealing with me but oh. it, it's this going from and I, I'm, I'm glad we've got city of Kirkland I am happy about that I was not happy with the you've got all this and I also understand but it it seemed to me that King County has all that information that should have been good to go for the city of Kirkland. It wasn't, and then I had to keep, I mean, refaxing 20 some odd. Oh. And, no, we still don't have it. Oh, no, we have it. No, we don't have it. Yes, we've got it. No, we don't. And is that getting any better than a year ago? Because I believe so. I believe it is getting better. That first transition when we go over to a new data system, right. I, there's going to be hiccups. Um, I'm sorry you experienced something like that. I, how do I, I had the same problem. You had something yeah. similar? Yeah. I'm sorry. Dog okay. license I need to renew shortly because he's got two. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I'm Con just ignoring it till. Contact me. Let's talk after this awesome. and then we will we'll get that fixed. We'll figure out. Which we'll get it fixed. We need to wear. <laughs> yes. He's jingly. I, I'm He's all jingly. Okay. Yes, so sir. If, if I'm hearing you correctly, uh, my dog gets lost in Arlington. They can read the chip, but they have no way to tracing it back. No. What you're no, no, no. So the microchip will contain your information as long as you register that information with your microchip that you put in your dog. So microchip. Uh, there's a bunch of different companies for your microchip. There's 24 Hour Pets, uh, Pet. There's PetLink. I think is another one. I didn't answer my question. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, I misunderstood. He gets, he gets lost in Arlington. Arlington. Okay. Pick Arlington. Pick Ellensburg. Anywhere. Away. Yes. They read the chip. Okay. Do they have the ability to find me, even though it's registered with my local vet, and we did all of that correctly? Yeah. So the chip, the okay. So the chip number. There's a series of numbers on that microchip that they would scan for. That series of numbers tell us who to call. That that microchip company. The company would have your information, who would then relay it to who found the pet. Does that make sense? So, I understand what you're saying, and you're but, saying there's a series of numbers. Every time I've seen them scanned, they usually come up with about four digits. The ones that I have, the they're, mm -hmm. they're longer than that. Yeah, they're, than that? they're okay. they tend to be longer. The first, I think it's the first four digits tells you are supposed to indicate which company to contact. Okay. And if no matter what company you contact, you give them that number, they're going to tell you you need to contact this company, okay. and they should have. They will have your information there's as long as it's registered. The to trace back, oh, absolutely. Question. Yes. Sorry for the miscommunication. Yeah. Would they trace back with a license, also? Yes. Okay. So, um, 
the microchip will be housed under pet data, but your pet license information won't be housed under your microchip company unless you give them that information, because those two do not talk. Um, but it changes every year. Yeah. No, the number shouldn't change. No, it doesn't change. No. Once you get no. one, no. it's good. You just have to repay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but when you fill out your pet license information, just make sure you put all of the information down to include, you know, your microchip number, um, emergency contact, your information, all of the all of the stuff that is needed. Um, so we have it in our database, so we can contact you. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question. Absolutely. Okay. Um, we uh, don't put the tags on our dogs. Okay. And, but uh, we take them out, right? And mm -hmm. they're leashed, contained, and whatnot. Um, well, you know what I'm yes. <laughs> And um, what, what I'm trying, what I'm wondering is, I have their uh, their tags, mm -hmm. picture of their tag, and their license in my phone. Is that good enough? No. So it says in our code that they should be wearing their tag, but if you came to me and you showed me all of these things, yeah. you, that's proof. Okay. I'm not going to, you know, that's not what I'm going to be doing. That's proof for me. Okay. So it should be good. Okay. Okay. But it's just making sure you have that, that information as well, um, just so we can help get the dogs back or the cats. And it's just cats and dogs that need to be licensed as of this time. Uh, we don't require lizards to be licensed or tarantulas, nothing like that. So should I take the, I take the tags with me? It wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt to take the tags with you. But if you have pictures of your tags and you, I can, I can even look you up on my phone. Like I have access on my phone right out in the field. I can okay. look it up there. Okay, got it. Okay. Any more questions on this? No? Okay. So this is what you had mentioned. This is my dog, Lulu. She's a little wild thing. Um, she's, a, yes, we call her the coyote dog. <laughs> um, Fluffy belongs to who? And this is what we had talked about before. Um, making sure you have a current picture of your pet. We can all tell Lulu is a gorgeous dog. She's tan, she's got white hair. Um, but who does she belong to? Because there's no tags. I don't see any tags. Uh, so I make sure that I have this as well with my smiling face. Um, we're both smiling in this picture. This is actually the day that I, I picked her up as a, as a stray, as a rescue. So, good job. Yes. So it's good to have these things. Um, or having, also having one with your designated uh, pet caregiver. So have a picture with your pet giver. If it's going to be your family member, your fr best friend, the neighbor next door, just so they can go and pick up that pet if you do not have the availability to do so. Mm -hmm. I wish we all had pictures of our pets right now. We would be doing show and tell. <laughs> I mean, we can definitely do that. <laughs> any questions about this or any suggestions that you have? No? Okay. Look how cute she is. <laughs> So we've talked about a lot about dogs and a little bit about cats, but we haven't considered uh, some of those more exotic or small breed animals. So let's talk about some special considerations for birds. Birds should be transported in a secure travel carrier. Even if your bird loves to travel and is comfortable carried on your shoulder and you walk around the house or the yard like that and they don't fly away, doesn't mean that they won't do that in a stressful situation. When you're transporting your animal, make sure they're in a secure carrier. Um, in cold weather, uh, make sure that there is blankets available to them. Uh, it also helps reduce uh, the stress of traveling and warm. Make sure you have a spray bottle, kind of like with our doggy leaning his ear into the water bowl. They want to stay cool, so these are nice easy ways, so maybe adding a spray bottle to your, your travel kit is a, is a good idea. Um, have a recent picture with your pet. <laughs> and then 
make sure if any of your pets have that leg ban, you have the number written down somewhere, but also it's in the picture so that they see that. Um, the carrier does not have a perch. Line it with paper towels that can be changed frequently because you never know when you're going to get back to that area where you're going to be able to clean it. So having easy disposable uh, bedding is a good idea. Keep the carrier in a quiet area as possible, which may be difficult, but find that safe, quiet place to just let them kind of de-stress. Um, we have, so make sure we have the right feeders. If you need to leave your bird unexpectedly, the feeder will ensure that we have daily feeding. So just make sure that there's extra food in there for them to chow down on. And then to keep items to keep on hand, a catch net, heavy towel, blanket or sheet to cover the cage and cage liner. Uh, these are all really good ideas to have regardless of what type of pet you have is having that extra bedding or blankets. Um, any questions under that or any recommendations from my bird owners? Because I do not own a bird. No? Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we do have reptile owners and amphibian owners. Um, and these animals, they need the most delicate type of care because they are so exotic and they do require a lot of care. Um, transportation here really should be maybe in a pillow case. It's easier, it, it sounds a little crazy, but a pillow case works beautifully. I've done it out in the field when I've come out into contact with snakes. Yeah. And I didn't squeal. I did very well. <laughs> but, um, but for a permanent and secure housing um, place, you should probably use more of, of like a tub aware, like a big tub type thing with a lid on it. But make sure they have access to breathe and all of that. Uh, a sturdy bowl large enough for your pet to soak in. Lizards and snakes need the ability to soak and bathe and do all the things that they need to do. Um, <laughs> and then we want to make sure we have some type of heating device uh, because they are cold blooded. They need to be able to stay warm. And however you want to do that is up to you. Just make sure that it's safe and it's not burning them. So you can use, I have a cute little portable plug-in heating pad that I used with a snake once. Um, it's battery operated so the little cord hangs out here so it's not next to the snake um, but it's easy I can use it on the road you can use hot water bottles anything like that it could work but I would just I would be cautious so that they're not ingesting any of it if anything breaks anything like that make sure there's a good barrier and you're and you're watching closely um, but it is a because they get very hot initially yeah. Mm -hmm. So, very good idea. And then lizards, um, which I have to admit, I owned a bearded dragon at one time. It was very cool, but I don't like crickets, so it didn't last long. That's their main food. Can be transported just like birds can, just in a secured cage. Any questions on our reptiles? <laughs> <laughs> Anything? Right. Sorry. My daughter's, the, uh, the, the power went out grandson had a, yeah, and she slept with it to keep it warm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> really, uh, you got to do what you got to do, and you got to keep them warm. Survived. That's awesome. Very cool. So, so if I have power that goes out and I have a lizard, I need to contact her and she can help me out. Okay. Right? <laughs> I'm going to tell her about the bat. The lizard is long gone. Yes. The battery operating thing is Yes. Any some folks down in Kentucky who love to find you. <laughs> <laughs> there was a slight rumble in their couch. About with what? It turned out to be a six foot boa constrictor. Mm. Not theirs. Okay. So nobody in the area has a boa constrictor. <laughs> nobody knows where it came from and they can't find a home for it. I like the story. Of I know I might know some people, but it's not going to be me. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> just, I just, that was incidental. It came across my, my feet. How interesting to find a ginormous snake, snake in your couch. We had an African ball python once, my ex and I, and it 
escape from his carrier, <laughs> and we couldn't find it for days. Oh my we had a friend who was petrified of snakes, and we just like, doo, 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 doo. turned out it was in the bottom of the fridge wrapped around the coils because it was warm. <gasps> oh, was warm. wow. Right, so we had to tilt the fridge up and unwind it and get that. Oh my work. god. Like, oh, we loved it. It was warm. It was happy. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of like the, the, uh, the $24,000 in the couch they found. I like that yeah, way better. Way I will take that any day. That was just one big. <laughs> yes. So our small animals, so like our guinea pigs, our our little mice, or our rats, or hamsters, or did I already say hamsters? No, I said guinea pigs. And then our bunnies. Big fan of bunnies. Um, some, these guys should be transported in a secure carrier with their bedding material. Make sure they're not placed on hard bedding. They can get little sores on their feet and bellies. Um, should have uh, food and food bowls in there. Don't just lay the food in the bedding because it's going to get mixed up in all their ickies in there. And, their, and when I say ickies, their urine and poop. So want to make sure they keep that separated. Make sure they have access to water. So a, a nice uh, thing of the water drip. Um, items to keep on hand is salt lick, extra water bottle, a small hide box or tube, and bedding for a week because it's just good to have on hand. Um, for the small box to hide, I had one lady who would have extra things of uh, tissues, she had tissue boxes, and she, when she was done with them, that would be their pet's hiding spot. So those are really easy things to, to have on uh, or available for you. Any of my small critter owners have any recommendations or anything like that? No? Okay. So this one's kind of fun. This is, this is a side note. Um, canine body language. I teach this to the officers at my work. Um, I was taught this at the Animal Control Academy. Dogs talk, you know, they bark, but a lot of their language or their speaking to us is through body movement um, and how they, how they pose their body. So when we're dealing with our own pet in a, in a stressful situation, these are things that we should be looking at because they may not be displaying our normal happy, excited puppy or our calm puppy that we are used to. Um, one thing that I would always tell you guys to look for is you're going to see a lot, of, a lot of frightened, a lot of anxious and nervous, maybe alert is a good one there, um, or even this one. Because what happens when we get, when they get scared? Anybody? What happens when they get scared? They defend themselves. And how do they defend themselves? Barking, growling, biting. So it's important to know what your dog looks like or be aware what your dog might look like in those stressful situations and how to approach those. So how do we approach a dog that might be doing one of these not happy things? Very cautiously. We're not going to go up and get in their face and be like, hey, it's OK. Come here. I want to put my face in your face, because that's how your face gets bit. <laughs> so um, something I always recommend is this. It's just a handout. I'm not going to make eye contact with you. I'm going to give you your space to come to me. And then when you're feeling comfortable, I'm going to secure you with a leash, and we're going to move on. We're going to move away from the stressful situation. So these are just some things to look for. I see them a lot out in the field. Not ever, it's surprising not every dog wants to be my friend. I don't understand why. So I have to take my time. Um, when I first got Lulu, I got a lot of this. Even though she was my dog and we were best friends automatically, when I got her home, we did a lot of this because she was nervous. She was unaware of her, her surroundings. So a lot of, a lot of OK, I'm not looking yeah, at you, girl. Always, mm -hmm. sideways. always sideways. But stay alert to your, as well so you, they don't make that surprise lunge at you. So these are good things to be aware of. This is my favorite. Submissive. Pet my tummy. Um, next one. So we're going to do a little test. We are going to identify what body language we're seeing. 
Relax. 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 Yes. Aggressive. aggressive. So this one here? Is it you're saying aggressive? I think you might be playing. That could that one's submissive. Mm-hmm. Because we have a belly turned towards him, don't we? Yeah, I think they're playing. Mm-hmm. I would say so too. I think that camera guy just got him at the right time. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is one of my favorite. Yeah. That's just a say what. <laughs> yes. This face? <laughs> I, I didn't do it. So this, this dog, I would definitely approach, this is me without coffee, but I would approach this dog with that side. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I would even approach this dog with the side, because he's... He's now been scared. Yeah, he's scared. This, this little guy down here? He's scared. He's scared. Same side approach. These two? I think it's easy. Yes, very playful. Those are ones that are calm, they're relaxed. You could probably get down and do the high pitch. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. And they would come right to you. But whenever I greet a new dog, it's always the yeah. side. Any questions on this? No? OK, cats. Cats <laughs> are cats. Cats do what they want. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. So these are the, this is the faces of cats. I don't agree with this chart because this cat I still feel might come at me, yeah. but, <laughs> but it's just knowing that your cat in a very stressful situation, like a natural disaster, they, they're not going to show their normal playful self if that's what your cat does. Um, they're going to be fearful. They're going to show some body language that's a little different. I would play this uh, video for you, but I don't have any audio, and it's not going to make any sense without the the, vid, uh, the audio. So if you guys are wanting this video, I'll send a link out tomorrow it's very so everyone funny. can see it's it. About, and I'll uh, send all the slides too. It's about a very sweet cat that's not very happy, <laughs> and it's involving a it's an involving a police officer. Oh, no, we'll yeah. just leave it there. <laughs> but the kitty behaviors, just watch for these. Watch for that. A uh, friendly greeting with the high head and the tail that's not bristled, aggressive. We got the tail that hangs straight down that is kind of bristled out. Um, curled and curved uh, tail and back is very defensive. And then we have our feel for fear, fearful cat with the raised and bristled tail and that very distinctive face. So just be mindful of those. Anybody run into that with their own cat? I'm just, yes. I'm just saying you go at that with the happiness and it's going to get you because you're it. Yes. And no cat likes to really be rubbed on their belly, just so you know. I learned that the no, hard that, way. No, that is my fear. Our feral cat really loved me, loved it when I rubbed her belly. Whew. Loved it. Teach me your ways. I, well, <laughs> she, she, I, she, my parents got her right before, right before I was born, so she had been around me for a whole life. So, oh, wow. Yeah. I, well, I've never been able to pet a cat's tummy without getting a swat, so I, I'm still trying. Wildlife in a, in a disaster situation, please leave them be. I know we want to save them, especially if they look like they're in distress. Leave them be. Maybe jot it down that you saw maybe an injured one or something like that, and we can contact Fish and Wildlife. Um, but for your safety and your safety of your pets and your family and all of that, I would leave them be. Any questions on that? Well, on the same line, say we're out walking to CKC, because I have seen a couple of the coyotes lately, mm -hmm. especially down by, because I live over at the South Park and Park and right in the apartments right there, so I walk that 52nd, 108th section a lot, yeah. even over on the Bellevue side. And I've been seeing, I've probably seen two or three of the coyotes out and about now. Okay. So would we just contact you to contact him? So there's an online reporting that you can do through the city website, yep. and I'm the totally our, blanking on what is it, it is. Our town app, our it's town it's app. called our Kirkland. Our Kirkland. Yeah. Our Kirkland. And you can report almost anything through there yep. from okay. potholes to animal to whatever, so it's and a really handy tool. And that gets forwarded to me too, okay. um, so that we can document. And I have this whole Excel sheet with documentations of where we've seen them, what their activity were, was, and um, actions that we've taken. Uh, but yeah, documentation is, is huge on that. But with preparedness and your safety and all of this when it comes to disaster, leave them be. for Let them do their wild thing. Do you have anything to add? No? Okay. So how do you, 
you all get involved outside of doing this awesome class. Um, one thing that you'll find in your folder, I put it in there, is WASART. It's the Washington State Animal Response Team. They are amazing. They will come out, if say if we have a down horse, um, they will come out and they'll help get that horse out. They've done a lot of amazing work. They have classes that you can sign up for, volunteer stuff. Um, they're just, they're a great resource to have. Um, Kirkland Emergency C Communications Team. That's a, so we, we have a few volunteer programs and uh, preparedness programs if you're interested. So the Kirkland Emergency Communications Team is a ham radio group that provides backup communications for the city in case our normal communications methods go down. So if you're interested in that, I have information at the back about all of these. Our Community Emergency Response Team is a training that we do uh, that's a nationwide training. It's a lot of fun, very hands-on, and it just teaches you how to respond if something happens. So we go into disaster medical, uh, light search and rescue, disaster psychology, how to take, just how to take care of yourself and the people around you if something so big happens that normal first responders can't get to you. Uh, we also have a program called Map Your Neighborhood and we have a facilitator training coming up for that in March and that's all about getting to know the people who live right around you and knowing who has some resources that might help in a disaster, who might have pets that you know might mm -hmm. need to be taken care of and any special needs they have and then other concerns. So. Um, there's a lot of ways that if you want to keep going in this stuff, we do classes and then there's all these programs as well. Any questions on that, you guys? Okay. So stay safe, prepare, and don't forget your pets. That will be my biggest message, don't forget your pets. Um, and that includes all of them, even our snakes and lizards and scaly things. Um, <laughs> questions? I just thought that was really adorable. <laughs> Any, oh, question? Any questions? Okay. And then, if you want to, this is just get in touch information. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't, I don't know why it changed the formatting on it. Um, so the city has an animal services page. If you have more, there's a lot of information about the things Officer Madison talked about with licensing and all that stuff. It's very hard to see up there, but we have a pet preparedness web page, and I will send the links out to these in an email tomorrow, so make sure you signed in with your email there. Um, if you have more questions about pet preparedness, if you want to link to some of this information, that's on there. And then yes. um, our emails are on there for animal control and emergency management is hard to see, but I have cards in the back. If you have questions about any of this stuff, you can reach out to either of us, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll get you in touch with the right people if, if that's what you need. So Absolutely. we're always here to help. And just let me, let me point out really fast that this goes to our non-emergency dispatch center. So if you are needing uh, my desk line, uh, I have my card in these folders here for you and that goes directly to my desk line. But if you have a pet related emergency or anything like that, you contact that and I can get dispatched out to help or an officer to help, okay? Let's see, and that's it. Before we leave, I have um, some awesome treats that were donated to us by Denny's Pet World for doggies. And so we are gonna do a little, little test. Okay, one of the things that I mentioned in the identification that was important to have was a picture, some pictures. So can somebody tell me what picture should be included for your dog? You and your dog. Yes. <laughs> Great job. Here you go. There you go. Um, let's see. Who who could be a designated caregiver? Your neighbor. Yes. This is so cute. <laughs> I thought that wouldn't be fitting. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, I didn't really plan this out well, so we're kind of winging it. Um, what is one thing that I mentioned in your first aid kit that would be helpful for your dogs? No. It was one that I specifically labeled out. Oh, uh, muscle. 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 Well, I can't give a dog. <laughs> we'll do another one. Um, 
videos can do? Um, let's see here. I said that it's important to what with your microchip after it's been implanted. Hands. Yes. Register. Yes. You get to plan these out a little better. Do you want a funny? <laughs> so true. <laughs> what is the best way to greet or even approach your dog in a stressful situation? Non-confrontational. Non-confrontational. Okay. I will give you that one as well. Because I'm all. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to donate this. My, this will not be yeah, yeah, but I got delicate boy. Oh, that's a problem. Who's donating anybody that's bigger dog than my seven pounders? <laughs> or somebody without a delicate tummy? We got three cuties over here that I bet yeah. would love it. <laughs> and then the last question. How can you guys get involved? What is one of the ways that we mentioned? Oh, like the cert? Yes. Not too. Okay, guys. That's it for my class. If you guys want to stay around and I can show you how to do that muzzle with the slip lead, I absolutely, kind of, yes. So, so with these, because this can be pinching on their nose. What I, I usually do is I start from this side and then I would wrap around here, putting this through this. Awesome. Oh. That, okay. so and that way you have a good hold here where your hand is far away from the top of the head. Does that make sense? That's what Jen does. So that's, what, sorry. that's the mouth. So that's okay. going around the mouth. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's going around the muzzle. So, okay, so here, here, here. Handle. Yeah, here's your dog. So here's my dog. I'm going to give this a little bit of room. Okay. I'm going to wrap it around. Right. Wrap it around. Pull it through the handle. And then I would pull it through the handle. And it should loop around if you don't make it too tight. I just don't want to hurt you. But it will, it will tighten up okay. here. And that way, this metal piece isn't pinching down right, on the muscle. Right. Okay. okay. okay.